So I want to begin by giving a little preface and making sure that you all know that sometimes ministers have some strange hobbies and pastimes. So it won't sound so weird when I say a few years ago I was doing some light reading of some random church newsletters, because that's what I do sometimes in my free time. Um, to be fair, doesn't everyone read church newsletters for fun? No? Okay. So I was reading the December edition of some random church newsletter, and I came across these prayers that they included in it that I loved so much. There was a prayer for before you get out of bed on Christmas morning. And then there was a prayer for those who had to work on Christmas Day. And then there was a prayer to say before opening gifts. And then there was a prayer at the end of the day. I thought it was an ama the most amazing thing I had ever seen, which also tells you ministers sometimes get a little too excited about strange things. But that's for another day. I know it was a random church newsletter because I asked every one of my clergy colleagues I can think of, was that your church newsletter that did that? Was that yours? I think for almost 10 years, and no one has claimed it. And I have spent a lot of time trying to find them. What I loved so much about those prayers was the intention, the pausing, the ritual, which both invited and acknowledged God's presence in the movement of Christmas, which... I don't know about at your house, but at my house, it can get pretty hectic. And we can, for moments, maybe long moments, forget exactly why it is that we are gathered together and what it is we are celebrating. So a prayer, the prayers that were offered, a prayer and the blessings we have been talking about this evening, I don't think they're that different. Both of them are invoking the Spirit of God in relationship to ourselves and others. So while these were called prayers, I would call them blessings. Just as we have heard in the various texts tonight, Mary is the blessed one. All people will call her blessed. Elizabeth is blessed not only by her geriatric pregnancy with John the Baptist, but also with her visit from Mary. And this story that we are hearing tonight does not end here. It progresses, and we will learn of a blessing Jesus both offers and receives as an infant in the temple, and the blessing of a warning for the wise ones to return home by another way. As I said at the beginning of our service, we have challenged in the Kirk in the last few weeks the assumptions that a blessing is about prosperity and good fortune, when in fact a blessing is an encounter and an engagement with God. Blessing is a powerful word that shouldn't be misused to convey anything like privilege or entitlement, but is in fact right relationship, which includes compassion and humility and the lights that are born among us this night, hope and peace, joy and love. A blessing is an enactment of what author Anne Lamont says of grace. She says it meets you where you are, but it doesn't leave us where it finds us. That is what I found so significant about those prayers. They were all meeting us exactly where we are in this holiday season by creating space to make room for God. Or said another way, these prayers or blessings simply and profoundly acknowledge God's presence among us. When we bless, we are invoking a spirit that will not leave any of us where it finds us. There is a song we sing reasonably often at the Kirk because I love it so much. And the name of the song is, I Will Never Be the Same Again. Most of you have heard me say again and again how much I love that song because that is always true. Every time we gather on a Sunday morning, we come in and we depart a different way, or at least that is our deepest hope, that every time we gather for worship, that we will be changed that we have opened ourselves up to God in a new way. And that is the blessing. I think for some of us, a lot feels more like a blessing this year, more like we are changed or can be changed after last Christmas Eve, when first, definitely it's different for me. Last Christmas Eve, I was standing right there on the floor and speaking to a computer screen in an empty sanctuary. And everyone else was worshiping at home through a screen. 
But what we knew last year, what those of you who are worshiping at home know tonight, is that God comes and is present with us no matter where we are or how we gather. That when we worship, whether in person or virtually, that we can find ways to be connected and grounded and inspired. So we know it is possible. We just have to create the space for the blessing. And so, as we all move through the motions of the next few hours of Christmas, both nostalgic and new this year, I invite you to make room. Take time to bless all along the way, which can be as simple as naming or touching or shining a light on that which you bless. My father-in-law likes to give us flashlights for Christmas, every one of us, every year. So we've got a lot of flashlights. So if you get a flashlight for Christmas, I invite you to pull it out and shine the flashlight in different directions as offers of your blessing. That's probably a little safer than the candles you'll get here in a few minutes. The children of the Kirk as well have a tradition that they bless one another often when they depart. They have a blessing balm, which is labeled as such, and they make sure to bless each other's hands before they leave. Now their blessing balm looks a lot like a tube of chapstick, but if you ask them, it is always so much more. And so as you gather in whatever way you gather, whether alone or with your largest manifestation of your family, bless each other with flashlights or chapstick with words or moments of silence or breath. In whatever way, offer your blessing. When you wake up in the morning, bless the day. Bless and remember essential workers, first responders, hospital staff, nursing home staff, and many others who have to leave their families to work. Give thanks for them and allow that moment of gratitude to impact all of your future interactions with those people. And when your family gathers together, offer a blessing of gratitude that science has made it safer for us to gather. Bless the ones that are not there due to death or division. Name aloud your love. Name aloud your grief. Bless even in the tension that exists. And let's face it, that tension exists in every one of our families. Bless it. Invite God into that tension. Bless the love that exists between you that shines brighter than red or blue ever could. When you open your gifts, bless the giving the hope to offer joy to another, and bless the receiving. Ask God to protect your hearts from greed or abundance, for the humility it takes, though rarely named, to receive and respond in grace when you get a really ugly sweater that's three sizes too big. And bless the laughter. Bless the disappointment. Bless the paper and all the ways it can and should be recycled. And when you are sitting around the table and the conversation gets heated or lags, offer a blessing for the person sitting next to you. Name your gratitude for them out loud, a treasured memory and a commitment to deepening of your relationship or healing of your relationship in the year to come. And if you are alone, do the same. Write a blessing to those you know or those you don't. Write a blessing, offer a word, call someone, send a letter, or take time to sit and offer your blessing to the deepest, most beautiful part that you know of yourself and the way God has gifted you. And when there is too much noise, bless the noise. And when there is too much silence, bless the silence. And when there is too much mess, bless the mess. This night is our blessing and everything we do in response to the birth of the christ child is our opportunity to experience the fullness of this blessing by following in the way of jesus we offer our blessings on each other on our earth on our neighbors on our on the strangers in the shadows and in the light so tonight we bless by giving our offerings that will, as Ellen said, go toward our mission team and our ministry. And in a moment, I will invite you forward to take, to receive communion, to receive a piece of bread, and to take a cup to know God's love in our very bodies. 
And then we will take a candle and form some type of circular shape around the sanctuary. Now, usually we try real good to do a circle so everyone's there, but we want to kind of try to keep some distance tonight so it can be all kinds of strange circle forms. Don't go back to preschool perfect circles. That's not what we're looking for. But we are going to bless one another tonight and watch the glow of the Christ light shine and gather and grow throughout the sanctuary as it has been gathering in our spirits throughout Advent. And then we know that that light will call us to take that blessing beyond this space and into our world.